We are Brooke and Gary. One Life has been our home for the past two years and over 6,000 nautical miles. In our last episode, we left the Pearl Islands, and after an eventful two-day sail, we just dropped anchor at this remote island off the Pacific coast of Panama. We are anchored here in Isla Canal de Afuera and there is a reef everywhere so it took us a while to get situated but now it's a moment of truth because Gary is going in to look at our hole to see how much damage the tree did. Wow! So we are sailing along, sitting in the cockpit, doing about seven knots and then all of a sudden we both just heard and felt the loudest thud ever. Felt like the boat like shake a bit. So it actually hit twice and we both jumped up and I looked back behind the boat and there was like maybe like a three foot diameter tree, maybe like 20 to 30 feet long. So I think I can see where it hit the bow of the boat. And then I can definitely see where it hit the keel, but no crack or dent or chip or anything. It's just like the paint scuffed. All right, well, since Gary gave the semi okay on the keel from the tree, he said there's just a couple scratches on it, but nothing to be concerned of. We will take care of it when we haul out and do our bottom job. I'm gonna jump in this water because it's the whole reason we sailed 200 miles to get here. There was so much life just in the shallows around one life that we couldn't wait to get our scuba gear on and dive a bit deeper. Tradition. Cheers. After our long sail here, it felt great to unwind and we couldn't wait for the sun to come up again so we could explore more of this remote island. It is really beautiful here and we woke up to a beautiful sunrise and there's probably about 20 dive sites around this island but since it's just the two of us and we have to anchor the dinghy and be very careful with currents we're gonna spend this morning running the dinghy around to a few of them and scouting them out so we'll be checking for a spot to anchor the dinghy and checking to see what the currents are like and then maybe this afternoon or tomorrow we'll get out the dive gear and go back and get some scuba dives in we're pretty excited. Well, we didn't have to go far and we found a good little spot that doesn't have any current right now. So we're gonna quickly grab our scuba gear and go check it out. We descended down our anchor line and immediately spotted some gray figures patrolling the bottom. The rocky terrain was teeming with life. 
but as we went deeper, we hit a wall of cold, dark water. So we turned back and stayed in about 30 feet of depth. This was our first time seeing white tip sharks, and we approached with caution, but quickly found them to be very docile. The angelfish and smaller reef fish were quite unafraid of us as well. White tip reef sharks inhabit the Indian and Pacific oceans and typically grow to be about five feet long. The huge number of sharks we saw here is a sign of a healthy ecosystem, and we were thrilled to be able to watch them cruise around in their own environment. The amount of life here was astonishing, and as we ascended back up to our dinghy, we couldn't wait to get back in the water and explore some more. We just got back to One Life after our dive, and it was really nice. We saw a lot of white tip sharks and a whole bunch of other fish that we've seen for the first time, so we're gonna have to look them up to see what they are. And now, Rick's making lunch, and we're gonna have the mahi that we caught yesterday. Scuba diving and fresh fish, life doesn't get much better. Our first dive was so good that after lunch, we decided to go out and do a second dive, and it was even better. We found a spot with nice clear water for our second dive, and dropped down to about 50 feet into a world of magic. These dives made us feel like beginners again, because we were seeing so many fish we had never seen before. For us, this is what scuba diving is all about. The excitement of spotting new creatures and fish for the very first time. There was so many schools of huge fish, like huge jacks, huge snapper, trevallis. We saw some sharks, some moray eels. It was just awesome. It was so wild and so many fish. It's so cool here on the Pacific. It's so different than the Caribbean for sure. We've got the, uh, the whole place to ourselves here at Isla Canal de Afuera. And it's part of Coiba National Park. So it's all of a marine protected area, which I think is why there's so many fish and it's pretty cool. Canned pineapple for the win. <laughs> Ooh, what do we have here? Vodka, pineapple, and seltzer. Nice, cheers. Cheers. That's cold and refreshing. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and watch the sunset and be happy. I had our dive compressor working overtime to keep up with our two dives a day schedule. With full tanks, we took the dinghy out to another dive site. This one happened to have a mooring installed, so we had high hopes. Unfortunately, as we descended, we quickly ran into a wall of cold, dirty water with nearly zero visibility. So 
We went up, got back in the dinghy, and moved on to another spot. This second spot was much clearer as we went down to about 40 feet. So we continued down to where the rocky ledge dropped off into the deep blue. But as we pressed on, we were soon overtaken by another wall of cold, murky water. This phenomenon is known as an upwelling or thermocline and is caused by deep, nutrient-rich waters being pushed up towards the surface. When this happens, it brings huge quantities of nutrients and plankton up to the shallower waters. This results in a conglomeration of sea life. Fish, sharks, rays, and whales all concentrate in these areas to feed. So what makes this area so special for sea life can also make it extremely challenging for diving. No worries though, the amount of life in the shallower clear water was more than enough to keep us entertained for dive after dive. I think we've been here for three or four days and we've done five dives and it's been really good. We've seen tons of life. Today we got to see a group of eagle rays, like a whole school of eagle rays, but the water's kind of dark and cloudy and cold down deeper. So I'm not sure we got a good shot of them on camera or not. But I think tomorrow we're gonna move on. So just another relaxing night here on One Life. We'll probably hang out, have some sundowners, watch a sunset and get some rest. Diving definitely wears us out. We've just been go, go, go with the diving. So we're ready to move on to a new place. Right, this morning we're already up, we're already sailing and we're already fishing. And I think it's like 7.30 a.m. So today we are headed to Isla Matuosa, which is the westernmost island in the Cuiva area. But there's a really, really notorious fishing spot between here and there called Hannibal Bank. And it's basically an underwater mountain that comes up from thousands of feet deep to about 60 feet deep. So it like collects all sorts of pelagic fish like mahi, tuna, wahoo, so we're going to take a little detour and troll over that area on our way to Isla Montuosa today. See how it goes. We saw a couple sport fishing boats running out this morning, so we know where they're headed too. <laughs> that one life was a sport fisher. Yeah, we're going to pretend like we're sport fishing today. We'll see what we do. All right, we just got to the first shallow bank. 
and it came up to like 350 feet and we're doing about five knots over it. We turned on the motor to give us a little extra power for a few minutes as we go through this rip, this current rip. No bites yet. But it's only like 9.30 a.m. So there's still time. With our autopilot engaged, we just waited patiently and hope to hear our lines peel out. We're coming up on the next bank and it looks like on the chart, it gets as shallow as 55 feet, but we'll see. It looks like we're marking a bunch of fish though, or there's something underneath there at like 500 feet. All right, well, it's a little after 12 and we've not had a single bite. We've tried bottom dropping, we've tried trolling, and I guess today's just not our day. So we have about nine miles to our anchorage for the night. So we're gonna go ahead and head that direction, but there's zero wind. So we're, we took the cells down and we are currently motoring. And with only a mile to the anchorage, we finally got a bite. Look how big of a fish we got! Look at that little thing. Woo! We didn't get skunked! Woohoo! Not quite the fish we were hoping for, but that's okay. We can't catch mahi out here every day. Okay, so we just got anchored here at Isla Montuosa, which is just a giant rock island, basically, in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> so the anchorage is a little exposed, but Gary's gonna dive down and check our anchor and hopefully we'll be good to go to stay here for a couple of nights. All right, well, Gary gave me the thumbs up that the anchor is all set. So this is where we will spend at least tonight. We'll see how it is uh, when the tide switches and what the current does, but we'll spend at least one night here, maybe two, depending on how we make out tonight. And then we will be off to our next stop, which will be Golfito, Costa Rica. We had peaceful conditions as we watched the sun go down. But that changed a bit when low tide came, so our sunrise was a bit more unpleasant. The small choppy seas coming into the anchorage were a tad uncomfortable. We didn't get much sleep last night we checked the anchor a few times because the chop in here with the current got pretty hectic and we were rolling a lot. But anyway, we decided that we are gonna go ahead and explore this island, even though we didn't get much sleep and we'll leave for Costa Rica tomorrow. All right, we made it to land at Montuosa. We had to row the dinghy over because it's really rough to be hoisting the outboard onto it. And also the shoreline here is so rocky that we really wouldn't have been able to motor over to the beach anyway. So we carefully rode over and landed between the rocks. We just found a campsite here on the island. It looks pretty cool. We just walked around to the other side of the island and it is extremely rugged. It's nothing but rocks and crabs and every now and then a little bit of sand. But the tidal pools are really cool. They're full of fish and crabs. And we're gonna make our way back over to the other side because it's really hot. We will happily exchange an uncomfortable night at anchor to be able to experience remote islands like this. I mean, just look at this place.
we've been chilling at this island for maybe far too long because the swell is now coming up over these rocks where we have to paddle our way back to One Life. Shit, we might have waited too long. Clean it up. Clean it up, we don't have time. Alright, you get into the paddle, and I'm gonna walk us out as far as I can. We're surrounded by fishing vessels. I think we found where the local fishermen hang out. <laughs> right in the middle of Hannibal Bank. All right, guys, we're going to leave you floating right here, but we look forward to having you on board for our next episode as we sail 300 nautical miles to Costa Rica. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching.